you ready to fly away? You can get ready in this service today if you're not ready. Well, you know, Brother Ed, I, I don't know if I'm ready. Then you better get ready. You don't know that you're ready, you better get ready. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'll fly away. Praise God. You know, it seems like on these uh, mission things, they always talk about flying. They said yesterday, one thing that every church needs to do is to send their pastor on a mission trip. Amen, brother. And Sister Beth started threatening me. You need to pray for her. I still hold fast to the verse where he said, Lo, I am with you. I have not found one missionary yet that will let me take a mission trip with them on a boat. He said, it just takes up too much time. But that's all right, isn't it? One of these days, I'm going to fly away. He will not be on no delta. <laughs> Amen. I'm going past the sun, the moon, and the stars. Going to a place called heaven. And that's going to be all right. Amen. It's going to be all right. Hallelujah. It's time for us to worship the Lord in our giving. I tell you, God is just so good to us. I, I mean, He is so good to us. And once again, I just I, I, I encourage you that whatever you give unto the Lord, know what you're giving for. I mean, if you feel like God just wants you to give for the general offerings of the church to help pay for the utilities, whatever that may be, you give unto the Lord. Maybe God lays it upon your heart to give a special offering to Sunday school. Pick up one of those envelopes, mark it. Uh, there's the midweek services, the women's discipleship, uh, for our general funds, our home for children. We don't mention about all these things all the time. I tell you, there are so many of them, but... Uh, the the place in Ocala, the heart of Florida Youth Ranch, is solely sponsored by the Church of God's in the state of Florida. That is our project. And so uh, whatever that the churches send in, that's how that they get it. They try to do fundraisers and all. Uh, but you may want to give to that, the heart of Florida, where it says home for children. That will go for the heart of Florida. Missions in there. Then it talks about the building fund. He said, I didn't know that that was planning on building anything. The building fund also helps to repair uh, the existing facility. And uh, a lot of people don't understand the upkeep that is upon the church uh, itself, our Sunday school plant, and also the parsonage, and all those things. I, I'm just asking you to pray. I'm not trying to get more money out of you. I just want you to pray. God, you lead me on what to give for. There's things right now as far as maintenance-wise that uh, we're going to have to be looking at and taking care of things on the parsonage. Uh, as some of you already know that unless God heals our roof on our church and our Sunday school plant, uh, we're looking at trying to replace that. Uh, how many of you understand that the sun does a number on those shingles? Yeah. Amen. And I know somebody said, well, it wasn't too long ago they put one on here. It's longer than what you think. Yes. And uh, so uh, I'm just asking you to pray about all these things. And, and you let the Lord just speak to your heart. You let God give unto you. Because God will give to you or want to give unto other people. Our next Sunday is our mission Sunday. I don't want you just to come in here next Sunday and say, oh, it's mission. I want you to pray this week. God, what will you have me to give toward missions? You see, and I, I'm not bragging. I'm not boasting. I'm just telling you from my heart what God has laid upon uh a wife and, and my heart to do, and we strive to give at least twelve hundred dollars a year to missions. That's a hundred dollars a month, and that's not much. That, that's not much whenever you consider the souls that 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 we've helped to reach in Africa. People, I'll never shake their hand here. And one day in glory, yeah. Amen. I'll be able to shake their hand. Yeah. Amen. Some pastor today is over there riding either a new bicycle or a motorcycle. Because the people here may never be able to see him ride his motorcycle here, but up in glory, we may be able to see him ride that horse with the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm invested in the kingdom of God, and that's what I am encouraging you to do. You just be obedient to God, and you give as God lays upon your heart. I know that uh, right now that there's pastors that says, well, everything that you give to missions, it just keeps it out of the local church. I disagree with that. Because some of you give to missions, and in this offering, you give things that you would never give to the local church. 
And that's not bad that God's laid it upon your heart to give to missions. No, this is not the mission offering. But I think every Sunday we ought to have mission offerings. Amen. People are giving something to missions every Sunday. Our ushers are coming. This time we're going to have two here in the front and two in the back. And I'm going to ask you to bring your offerings unto the Lord. Now, I want you to stand with me. We're going to pray over this offering. And then after we have given it, we're going to pray and ask God to bless this offering. Amen. How many of you believe that God does that? Amen. I know He does that. Amen. Father, I want to thank You for every blessing that You've given unto me. Lord, You've blessed me to God with a roof over my head. God, thank You for a good night's rest. Thank You, God, for the food on our table. Thank You, Lord, for the blessings of a church family. Lord, the blessings are just too numerous to tell. So God, today what I will give unto you, Lord, I am so grateful, Lord, that you have blessed me to where I can give back to you. I ask you today, God, that you would speak unto all of our hearts to know, Lord, where that we will give, what we will give unto the Lord. And Father, and we will be obedient unto you. God, we will bless you in our offerings in Jesus' holy name. Amen and amen. Let's bring our offerings to the Lord. Blessings today, Father. What we have given unto you, Lord, comes from sincere hearts, from willing hearts. I ask you, Lord, today that you will bless the offering, that you will multiply it. Father, to meet, to meet the needs of the local church, to meet the needs to God of the missionaries. God, whatever that the projects that have been given to today, Lord. And I also ask you, God, will you bless those that have given willfully and joyfully unto you today. God, let the blessings of heaven be given unto them that their cups run over. Pressed down, shaken together and running over as the scripture has said. I just praise you to God today for the willing hearts to give. God, we bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. amen. Thank you, Usher. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God. Also, let me remind you that if you'd like to uh, give online, you can do that. Uh, but I just, I'm looking for God just to, uh, to bless our church as we reach out. And we're, we're touching hearts and lives of so many different uh, people. Let's keep our hearts and minds upon the Lord this morning. Brother Ed's coming to sing for us. Give me a bunch of guitar in this monitor right here. <laughs> Like I said a few minutes ago, <clears throat> no matter what season you're in, you got to dig deep sometimes and still praise the Lord. Right? I told the pastor in a couple weeks I'm going to give my testimony for kind of what I've gone through and where I am now. But when I was going over songs earlier this morning at home to sing, I started singing a different one. I thought, yeah, that's good. And then I came to this song. And it just flowed out of my spirit. And I said, thank you, Jesus. Because he really will look beyond all our faults. Yes, he will. And he'll see our needs. Amazing grace will always be my song of praise. 
For it was grace that bought my liberty. I do not know just why he came to love me so. He looked beyond.
that you look beyond all of my faults. And he saw my needs. Aren't you glad that Jesus looks beyond our faults and our failures and he sees our needs? Amen. Amen. I want to ask you this morning to go with me to the book of 1 Samuel, the 17th chapter. I'm going to be taking my text from there in just a few moments. Something that the Lord has just been dealing with my heart on. A little thought before that we, we get into the, the message and the rest of the service. The Lord's been dealing with my heart on the thought that you know that you have forgiven someone when you can think about them, think about what they've done to you, and it no longer hurts you. It no longer bothers you. There's no more bitterness in there. You know that you have forgiven them. And I've said that because of the song that Brother Ed just sung. He knows that he has forgiven us because our faults, our failures, our sins. Once covered by the blood of Jesus Christ, no longer hinders our relationship with him. He's no longer angry. He's just forgiven us. His blood has washed it all away. I want to sing to you an old song this morning. It seems like that's about all that I know. I feel proud when I learn a new one. But this song says little David. And I want to be the one to share his testimony.
Savior today. Amen. Amen. I'm just his child. My father would always come and fight for me. My mom would always be in my corner. I have a heavenly father that's never been defeated. And he stands in my corner today. Will you please stand with me for the reading of God's word as we go to the book of 1 Samuel, the 17th chapter. And I want to speak to you for the next few moments, for the next few moments on the thought intimidating. Intimidating. Coming up in school, I was a runt, and I had people that liked to intimidate me. Some of them done a good job. I mean, there was times I ran home from school. There were some times I didn't get all the way home before they caught me. And there were those intimidators. Made me afraid. I found out the older I've got, the intimidators have just changed. Most of them today are spiritual. They're not so much physical. The devil wars against our mind. Comes against our families. Fights you on the job. But I'm telling you today that God will give you the power to stand and you do not have to be intimidated. In 1 Samuel 17 and 2, a very familiar story. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched 
by the valley of, of Elah and set the battle in array against the Philistines. Notice what's going on here. There, there's, a, there's a battle that's being fought, but yet it's not being fought. These people are scared. The Philistines stood on a mountain on the one side, Israel stood on a mountain on the other side, and there was a valley between them. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath. Where was the champion in the camp of Israel? And the Bible said, whose height was six cubits in a span, nine feet tall. It made Brother Paul, Brother Ed, Brother Rick, it made these guys look small. It made Dan and then, uh, Joshua back there to look short. <laughs> I have to look up to these guys. They would be looking up to him. Nine feet. That's a big boy, isn't it? He had a helmet of brass upon his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail. And the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. His armor alone was 200 pounds. He was much of a man. He had grease of brass upon his legs, a target of brass between his shoulders, and the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron. The spear head, the spear head weighed 25 pounds by itself. And one bearing a shield went before him. He stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, Why are you come out to set your battle in array? Am not I a Philistine and ye servants to Saul? And that was the whole problem right there. They were servants to Saul and not to God. Yeah. Choose you a man for you and let him come down to me. If he be able to fight with me and to kill me, then will we be your service? But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall he be our service and serve us. And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. Boy, what a powerful thought. I believe God's standing in the midst of this church today saying, give me a man that will fight. Give me a woman that will fight. Give me a man or a woman that will stand up. And when Saul and all Israel heard those words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. They were discouraged. Father, I pray today for encouragement. I pray for faith. I pray for zeal. And God, I pray for people to have an absolute in God today. I don't know how you're going to do it, but God, I have felt your presence from the very beginning of this service. I know you're in this house today, Lord, and I'm, I am just an expectation, Lord, of what that you are about to do. God, for the hearts and the lives of men and women that are going to be strengthened and empowered in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You may be received. Intimidation is still a weapon that the devil is using today. Intimidation is what the devil is using against a lot of people about witnessing and being a child of God. You see, many people today, they do not progress. Many have stopped trying to progress because of intimidation. Somebody told them that they could not do it. Somebody told them that they were unfit to do it. And the devil jumped on the band, up on the bandwagon and told them, they're right, you're unfit, you're not worthy, you're not qualified, so you can't be doing all of that. And so we start saying, I'm unfit, I'm unworthy, I'm not qualified, and I can't do that. Because the intimidator told us that we could not do it. What's the use? Why should I try to better myself? Why should I try anything any different? All I've ever done was fail. Why think now that I can win? And so the fear of failure and the fear of not completing something becomes another tactic of intimidation that the devil is using today. And it's because of intimidation that Sunday school classes have no teachers. 
Outreach ministries have no leaders. Because of intimidation, the sick are not visited. The devil said, you're going to catch what they have. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, I would not be alive if I caught everything of everybody that I went to see in the hospital. I just have to, I, I just have to trust in God. And I, I know that God's given me better sense that if somebody has a contagious disease to walk in there and just want to hug them. I know better than that. But I believe this, that the hand of God can protect us and the hand of God will protect us. But it's because of these intimidations, the hungry are not fed. We can't do it. We don't know how to do it. And it's because of these intimidations that we do not witness to people. Because of these intimidations, we do not invite people to our church. Amen. Amen. We say we want our church to grow, and I'm not asking for a raise of hands, but how long has it been since you invited someone to come to church with you? How long has it been since that you invited to give somebody a ride when they say, well, I really don't have no way. I'll come by and get you. The devil intimidates us. They don't want to go to your church. How do you know? You never ask them. And if they tell you no, are you sure? Well, that's a sermon within itself, isn't it? And another thing that happens, intimidation destroys motivation. We will not motivate ourselves, and we put others down that try to motivate us. The pastor says, come on, we can do it. No, we can't. That preacher's just up there trying to do his job. Bless his little heart. But we, we know that we tried that in the past and it didn't work in the past and it's not going to work in the present. You know why it won't work in the present? Because you're still living in the past. Right? And whenever we can tell this devil, I'm not going to be intimidated by you no more. I'm going to take an adventure in Jesus Christ. Some of you have lost your joy. And you think that Christians are supposed to walk around looking mean all the time. No, no, no. Put a smile on your face. If you're looking mean, I don't want to talk to you. Amen. I'll be honest with you. If I saw you at Walmart and I did not know you, and you've got that mean look upon your face, I'd probably go down the other aisle. Put a smile on your face. You're a child of God. You don't have to be intimidated. Here's the problem. And this is a reason why that the intimidator had marched into Judah and taken a stronghold. Number one is King Saul had lost his anointing and God had placed it upon another one and sin had robbed Saul of his anointing so he was no longer motivated to go and take risk. He was no longer motivated to motivate his army because he had lost the anointing. And because of that, he is also now grappling with fear. Somebody else is going to take my kingdom away from me. And a great warrior that once said, we can do anything, gather up the men, we're going against the Philistines and so God fight for them, now is camped on a hillside uh, waiting for somebody else to come and do his job. Yeah. Did you hear what I said? Amen. Saul used to be the man that said, I'll lead the fight, I'll lead the army, come on guys, get behind me, and we'll cause this Goliath to fall. But now he's camped on the hillside with the soldiers uh, and the soldiers are doing the same thing so is. Right, right, right. Oh, help us, Holy right, Ghost. Yeah. Come on, come on. Fear is now greater than faith. Yes. Fear of the giant is greater than faith in God. Bless him, Lord. And because of that fear, people that once subdued and conquered others greater than themselves are sitting back saying we can't do it. We'll die. People that once marched in confidence of, of knowing that the battle's not mine, but the battle belongs unto God, uh, and this army belongs to God. I belong.
belong to God. Today they're sitting back and they're huddled up in their tents and saying, who's going to go fight for us? Right. You're a soldier. You're supposed to be fighting. Right. Jesus, help us this morning. Yes, These people that one time would allow no man to stand in between them and victory. These people that once would not allow an army to stand in between them and victory. These people that once would not allow an obstacle to stand in between them and victory are now encamped on a hillside. And they're facing intimidation. And this is the reason why. Because Saul had started producing little Saul's running around. And everybody was trying to act like the king. Everybody is acting like the king. The man that once would lead them into battle, he is now intimidated. And the whole army is being intimidated because he is producing little souls. Friend, you listen to me. There's a lot of people today that stop growing in the Lord. And they stop striving to grow in the Lord. And because of that, other people that were looking to you, they have stopped growing in the Lord. And they have stopped fighting. And they have stopped striving. You at one time would declare a, a rut is nothing more than a grave with both ends knocked out of it. But today you're sitting there rocking back and forth. You're coming to church and you're going through the motions. You're stuck in a rut. But years ago you declared, I'll never get stuck in a rut. I'll never find excuses. But now your past failures are preventing you from trying to go into victories in the future. And we become like Saul. We are now intimidated. We are afraid to confess from anything. I'm telling you God's greater than any devil of hell. He's greater than all the devils of hell. And my God still moves mountains and he still subdues the armies. And I am not a soldier of Saul. I am the soldier of the Lord God of the armies of Israel. John Hagee at one time made a statement said you cannot change anything you will not confront. Right. You'll never defeat your giant without confronting your giant. That's right. That's right. Come on. Right. But the spirit of intimidation stops you from confronting your giant. Israel has stopped confronting Goliath because of the fears of so many people all around them. Fear was all over that army. There was no courage. There was no excitement. There was no zeal. There was no desire. To go and win. I got what's happened to the church. I'll tell you what's happened to the church. We've lost our zeal. We've lost our desire to get out here and to fight. Oh, that brother Spratling, the devil's going to get mad. I'm telling you, he's already mad. I know I'm listening to some of us talk. It seems like ever since that we've had the fast at the church, the devil, man, he, he's got mad. He is fighting. And oh, my Lord, he's fighting. And you know what I've been saying? Then what we need to do, we've already fasted and prayed enough to make him mad. Now we need to fast and pray enough to defeat him. Amen. 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 Oh, well, Brother Spallon, don't you understand, you know, because of all the fasting and the prayer, look how many people have been sick. But it's by his stripes we're healed. So now we gotta fast and pray until now that we are believing that he not is just one that can do it, but he is the one that will do it. And there's a lot of difference in between can and will. Amen. There's a lot of us that can do something for God, but we've dropped off the will. Yes. Yes. God's looking for some doers today. God's looking for people today. And as I've already told you that the Bible said that God's not given unto you the spirit of fear. So if you have a spirit of fear today, if you have a spirit of intimidation, that's not of God. You have to recognize your enemy. What is of God is the spirit of power. 
and of love and of a sound mind. That's of God. If you have anything less than that, then guess what? You need to go back to God and say, my God, help me. I've got to get the spirit of fear off of me and I need power. I need power to confront my giant. I need power to confront my enemy. I need power to confront my discouragements. I need power to confront my distress. I need power, God. I need your power. Give me that sound mind, God. Change my mind from saying that God can and let me start declaring God will and God is and God Almighty is already on the scene and God's already working. I'm just waiting for the evidence. I'm waiting for the proof and the pudding because I know that God's still God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so we're intimidated. And whenever you get intimidated, you become defensive. Come on. That's right. Come on. Goliath had come into their backyard and intimidated them. So now they are no longer offensive. They're no longer attacking. They're no longer chasing. They're no longer pursuing. But now they're being pursued. Intimidation causes you to get on the defense. And sometimes it only takes one step back. Friend, the Bible tells us that if a righteous man falls seven times, he gets up seven times. Not everything I've tried has prospered. In fact, sometimes I feel like I fail more than what I prosper. But it does not stop me from trying one more time. One more time. We once attacked the devil. We once attacked worldliness. We once attacked ungodliness. But since that we saw if we can let down our standard a little bit and come, let it come into the church, now we're intimidated to fight against sin. We're intimidated to speak up against sin. Hold on to me. You still with me, right? Amen. The church should be in a fighting mode. Here's what Jesus said in Matthew 11 and 12. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. In the NIV version, it said from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing, and forceful men lay hold to it. Did you get it? The church should be forcefully advancing. Yes. Yes. If you're waiting for the devil to give you a permit to walk down the street free, you're never going to get it. Am I right? If you're waiting for the devil just to bow out of the picture and say, well, you're just such a man of God until I, I, I tell you what, I'm going to get out of the way. Forget it. The devil fought Moses till his dying day. And I want to declare unto you, you couldn't be much closer to God than Moses. He had a personal experience with God up on the top of the mountain until his face did shine. Can I tell you, the devil fought the Son of God all the way up to Calvary's cross. And I want to tell you that neither one of these men did give up. They did not quit. And because of that, we're reading about great victories for Israel and for God's people today because the Son of God said, I refuse to be intimidated by anything including death itself I shall prevail God has sent me to go to the cross I'll bear my cross, I'll give my life so that other people may come to know Jesus Christ, my Lord I feel the preacher in this house this morning some of you are fighting for the wrong reason some of you are fighting for the wrong cause why? because you're still trying to advance your own agenda but the agenda should not be yours and it should not be mine, it should be the kingdom of God and I say church let's get ready to fight the kingdom of God and do it forcefully uh, through prayer and fasting and putting some legs on our prayers uh, and let's get busy for God. Amen. Amen. God help us. But David that little runt God give us some more runts. That little ruddy looking fellow began to intimidate the intimidator. That's right. <coughs> yes, he did. Yeah. Hold on. 
1 Samuel 17 and 32. I see this little shepherd boy getting up and walking out and looking the king who has been intimidated in the eye and say, let no man's heart fail because of him. Yeah. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. I believe Saul's eyes got about that big and looked at him and thought, you little runt. How are you going to go out in the face of a nine-foot man? And you, you, you look like a little punk. But he said, I'm going. I like verse 37 because it said, David said, moreover. Listen to what else I have to tell you, King. The Lord... That delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear. Are you hearing me this morning? Yes, amen. The devil does not want you to reflect upon your past testimonies of what the Lord has done. Amen. He wants you to forget that. Yeah. He wants you to forget the times that God healed you. God delivered you. God provided for you. And God fought for you. He does not want you to remember that, but David said, wait a minute. Let me give you a little resume. Because the same God that delivered me from that bear and out of that line, I'm telling you, he is going to deliver me. He's not saying he can deliver me. He's saying he's going to deliver me out of the hand of the Philistine. And David and Saul said unto David, go and the Lord be with thee. Will you hear what just happened? Come on. Saul still intimidated. He didn't say, Go out there, David, and I'm going to back you up, son. He didn't say that, did he? You go. And the Lord go with you. I said, I hear, watch you get whipped. I'll watch you get killed. But it did not stop. It did not stop David. You know why? It did not matter to him if he had the approval of his brothers who were already fussing against him and telling him to go back home. It did not matter to him if he had the approval of the other soldiers or not. It did not matter to him if he had the approval of the king. Some of you are looking for approval to get started doing what God's called you to do. Why are you looking for man's approval over something that man didn't call you? But God called you to do. Amen. And David said, I'm not waiting for the approval of the king. I'm not waiting for the approval of my brothers. I'm not waiting for the approval of the army. And so the Bible said in verse 40, he took his staff in his hand, a shepherd's staff. And he chooses five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had. Even in a scrip and a sling was in his hand. And he drew near to the Philistines. Now, are you talking about intimidation? I believe that the intimidator is starting to be intimidated. Number one, who do you think I am? I am a man of war for my youth, and you're sending this little run out here to fight against me? I think he's starting to get mad. I think he has been insulted. Some of you need to insult the devil. Oh, he, 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 I don't want to get mad. Get him mad. You know what I found coming up? If you can get them mad, most of the time they can't fight very good. I mean, they just, they're just beating air. Somebody that's got calm about them. They're sitting there, they're waiting, and they're taking aim. Right? right. You get him mad, and he loses his cool, and he has a temper. Fury's all over I don't know if David was thinking, if I could get him mad, and if he does throw that spear, he'll miss me. Yeah. Or maybe if he does sling that old sword around, it'll just go up over my head because he's so mad. I don't know. But I can tell you this much. I believe that David was intimidating the intimidator. And the Philistine came on and drew near unto David. And the man that bare the shield went before him. All right, if you're so big and bad, why don't you take the little man out of the way? Some of you have to understand the devil's been intimidating you. 
with the little men running ahead of him. Because he already knows that with the power of God that you are clothed, he doesn't stand a chance. He doesn't stand a chance. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him. He despised him. For he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. So you send this runt, this handsome boy out here, doesn't have a battle scar on him. You see him out here to fight with me. And now I want you to listen to this. The Philistine said to David, Come to me and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beast of the field. Notice what he's doing. He is resorting back to his old tactic. The same thing he used against the whole army. He says, Surely my tactic of intimidation will work against this ruddy little fellow that's come out here to fight. But David would not be intimidated because he knew where he was with God. Amen. If some of you would only realize where you're at with God this morning, you wouldn't be intimidated. If you only realize that God's the one fighting the battle for you, you would not be intimidated. But the devil's trying to distract you. It's not your sling. It's not your stone. It's not what you have in your pocket. It's who is anointing you. It's who is upon you. It's who is working through you. And greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. God, help us to see this. But David threw him back. He said, you come, you come your way. You come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. Yes. I'm coming to you my way. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah, you have your stuff and I have my stuff. Yes. And he said, my stuff is I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. Yes. You see, Goliath, this little sling's what you're looking at. You keep looking at it because this is not what is about to bring you down. Amen. Come on, church. Come on. You keep looking at the sling. You keep on expecting a stone, but I'm telling you, that's not your problem. The problem is I'm coming against you in the name of the Lord of hosts. I'm coming against you in the name of the God of the armies of Israel whom you have defied. Oh, Goliath, you not just offended me. You have offended God. You shouldn't have never done that. Hallelujah. And he said, this day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand and I will smite thee and take thy head from thee and I will give the carcass of the host of the Philistines. Woo! Can you hear it? He said, I'm not just coming after you, Goliath. I'm coming after the army that's standing behind you because I don't just have a sling. I don't have just five smooth stones. I have the God of the armies of Israel. I have the God that once anointed King Saul. His anointing is upon me, and you're going to fall, Goliath. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And that's exactly what happened. He said, I'm going to give you into the fowls of the air, to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Church, if you can get focused upon the battle again and realize that God's going to get all the glory and God's going to get all the victory. We're just the soldiers. We're just the warriors. But the, the army belongs to God. Our lives belong to God. The battle belongs to God. We're fighting for Him. Amen. You see, one of our biggest intimidations is today that the devil's got us all thinking that we're fighting for ourselves. Mm -hmm. But we're not. Right. He's fighting against us because he's fighting against God. Right. Therefore, we're fighting against him because he's fighting against God. And therefore, we're marching on in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. And devil, I want to give you notice one more time, though you already know this, that Jesus is not buried in a tomb. Amen. He's not hid on the hillside somewhere in Israel. That's right. But Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father making intercession for me. Today. Then turn around and remind him. Don't you remember whenever you thought that you had him dead? Nailed him to the cross. Put that spear in his side and you saw the blood and water come out of him. You thought, uh-huh. 
I got him like I got the rest of them. And all of a sudden, there was trouble that took place in hell. Are you hearing me this morning? Suddenly there was, there was a riot that took place in hell. Because here come Jesus Christ, who was supposed to have been dead and helpless. He's marching down through the corners. And he's looking the devil straight in the eye and saying, Devil, I come after you. All those other little devils that stood around who was running in front of him, uh, suddenly they start running away from him. Could you just imagine what happened that day whenever that, uh, that stone came out of that sling uh, and it hit Goliath in his forehead uh, and he fell to the ground? I believe that little armor bearer said, uh, Where can I run? Where can I hide? Where can I get out of the way? If this little boy can take down a man that big, uh, I believe those demons of hell were running and they were scattering them because they can remember the day whenever God said it's enough and they saw Satan fall as lightning out of heavens and God cast him into the earth and here comes the son of the most high God that has all power given unto him in heaven and in earth and he's looking the devil in the eyes and the demons are running and he's saying I'm coming after you you have the keys of death you have the keys of hell but I'm taking them back I want to tell you the Lord that I serve is still alive he's at the right hand of the Father, he's empowering you and I, and I will not be defeated, but I will be victorious through the Lord Jesus Christ. God help us today. You can choose to be intimidated by the devil, or you can choose to intimidate the devil. Amen. It's your choice. Amen. I'm gonna try to close right here. Sister Sprout, if you can help me. You don't have to listen to him. Remind you of your past failures. Do we have anybody in here that's never sinned? If you raise your hand, you've just sinned. That's what I thought. Every one of us could sit here today and say, All right, I've listened to the devil and he's intimidated me and I'm not worthy. And through the flesh, I am not worthy. Can I tell you that the precious blood of Jesus Christ has flowed over me. My sins have been washed away. And it's no longer I that lives, but it is Christ that now lives within me. And that devil may come to you and tell you that in the past you were a failure. You were defeated. You look at that devil and say, devil, that's in the past. Because in World War II, World War I, the Spanish-American War, the Korean War, the Civil War, all of these had places in it to where that the victor had lost some of the battles. But they did not lose the war. Devil, I might have lost a battle, but I'm not going to lose the war because I'm not going to stop fighting. I just prayed for reinforcement to come. Let me tell you how I feel. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Philippians 4 and 13. I can do all things through Christ. Hey, devil. It's not just me. It's Jesus too. It's Jesus too. And then look at Romans 8 and 37. Where that he said, Nay, and all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. I'm more than conquerors. I am more than just victorious. Because God's fighting through me. God's just using me. Me. And I love this one. And 1 John 4 and 4. Where he says, And ye are of God. Little children. And you have overcome them. Use the word against that devil. Devil, you're defeated. God said that you're defeated. Because he lives within me, I will overcome you. Because greater is he that's in, in you, in me, 
than he that is in the world. Amen. I'm telling you through faith today, you can be victorious. Does it mean, preacher, I won't never have to fight? Absolutely not. Right. Any preacher that will stand up and tell you if you'll just do step one, two, and three, well, then you'll never have to fight, they're not telling you the truth. Because you are a warrior. You are a warrior of the Lord Jesus Christ. And warriors have been trained to fight. And the more experience that you have as a warrior, the better warrior you become. God's given some of us experience. I'm telling you today that you do not have to be intimidated. You can be victorious. You are not defeated. You are victorious through the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't listen to that lying devil. Sometimes I call him just a lying scumbag. Because that's what he is. It's all right to call the devil names. Amen. He calls us names all the time. But he is a liar. He is a liar. And I'll be honest with you, there are some days that I get so stressed and I just feel the tension. And I just start praying and saying, all right, God, it's yours. I don't know how you're going to do it this day. But I know that, Lord, at the end of the day, everything's going to be all right. And it's like there's a peace that God gives. Because everything's going to be all right. Because it's not me. It's God that's fighting. It's God that's going to give the victory. It's God. Can I move your mountain, saith the Lord? I say I can. Can I cause your enemy to flee without a fight? I can. Can I make your darkness disappear without another tear? I can. But I have also spoken unto you as my children that my children will be tried and you're going to be tested and your love is going to be proven. You know that I am God this day and I will strengthen you to climb your mountain. I will be the God that will fight by your side as you fight your enemy. And I will be the Lord that will lighten your path as you face your darkness. Say the Lord God. Ida yanda, Ida yanda, ikatala mahata. Yela maranda i kala mahata. Yela maranda i kata. Yela mana i kala mahasa. I kila mahata. Yela maranda i kala masanda i kai. Shall a man excel? Can he prevail? Can he endure? I say that he can, for I have made him to do just that. I have made man to where it is within him to fight, to resist, and not give up. But yet, the enemy is greater than you are, and you cannot do it alone. I am the Lord thy God that will be with you, and I will cause the giants that are far greater than you, far stronger than you, I will cause them to fall. But you must trust in me. For my ways are not your ways. My ways are not your ways, saith the Lord. But if you will trust in my ways, I will take you to the victory. I will show you my power. But know this today, you must trust in me, saith the Lord. For you cannot do it on your own. You will become discouraged and you will be defeated. But if you will keep your trust and faith in me, saith the Lord, you shall prevail. For I see the darkness that is upon you. But I will give you the light, and I will bring you through. And for you are my child. You hold on. You will not understand it now, and you will not even understand some in the days to come. But you will know that I am God, and I have brought you through.
Oh, God. Church, I don't know what some of you are going through. I know the devil is fighting some of you with everything that he has got within you. He is trying to intimidate you. He's trying to tell you you can't do no more for God. He's trying to tell you the way that you're feeling right now that, that you just don't feel like doing nothing else for God. But you don't listen to that intimidator. You may say, Brother Smiley, you don't know what I've gone through. And that's true. God has kept those things from me and, and God knows what he's doing. But I'm telling you that God knows exactly where you're at today. He knows exactly where you're at today. Yes. Will you stand with me, please? Some of you just need to find your place this morning to cry out and say, God, here I am. I need the Holy Ghost one more time to help me. I need your power. I need your strength. Lord, I am sorry. I tried doing this on my own. I cannot do it. But God, I'm coming back to you today to give the battle to you. I know the battle does not belong unto me. But God, I've listened to that intimidator. But today, by the help and grace of yours, God, I will not be intimidated no more. But I shall. I shall pursue. And I will intimidate the intimidator. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Will you step out today? I know God's speaking unto your hearts. I know that. I have felt God from the beginning of this service. God is in this house right now. God's wanting to strengthen some of you. God's wanting to help you. God's wanting to empower you one more time, one more time, one more time. You're not a quitter. You're not going to stop. You're not giving up. But you're going on. You're going to prevail. You're going to prevail in the name of Jesus. You're going to prevail in the name of the Lord. You're going to prevail.